When did you find out the good news? Uh, about 10 days ago. I'm really excited about this next video. I have an interview with an international doctor who has managed to secure their first job as a doctor in Australia. Hello YouTubers, I'm Anthony, I'm the career doctor. I help you manage your medical career right here on YouTube. In today's video, I talk to Path. It's an interview I recorded with him a couple of months ago. Uh, he's recently obtained his first job working as a doctor here in Australia. The interview highlights a number of key issues and I'm sure a number of you will want to watch it all the way through to get all the tips and advice and find out a little bit about how Path managed to get this job. For me, it highlights a couple of things. Firstly, the fact that it is in fact possible to get a doctor job here in Australia. I have a lot of people ask me that question, how difficult it is. It is difficult, but it is possible. However, as you'll see in the video, it can be a long journey and you need to be both smart as well as persistent and flexible enough to change your strategy along the way. A second key issue, as Path highlights a few times in this video, is the need to familiarize yourself with the Australian cultural context. Yes, you do have to focus on getting those Australian Medical Council exams done, but if you're not training yourself uh, in the nuances of Australian culture, when it gets to that point, particularly around the interview phase, you're gonna fall down because employers are looking for doctors who can integrate well within the team and within an Australian context. In this video, we discuss Path's journey from India to now working as an emergency resident medical officer right here in a hospital in Australia. How he approached the AMC exam, how he applied for jobs and how many jobs he had to apply for and how he went about improving his prospects with employers here in Australia and the types of interview questions that he actually received. I really think a lot of you that watch my videos will find this informative. Make sure you watch through to the end because I'll update you with where Path is up to right now. And also I'll go through a few key resources that I think you might find helpful in your journey. Okay, so welcome to the Career Doctor channel. And we've got, um, I think this is my first ever interview actually on the channel and we've got Dr. Path uh, Patel. Um, I hope Thank I got you. the right path, is that correct? Yep. Path for tip. Yep. Uh, and Path, uh, he sent me some news recently, uh, just a message on Facebook. Uh, it was quite exciting news. Um, just out of the blue on a weekend, I got this message saying, hi, Dr. Well, and just letting you know that um, I got a, recently got a job off at one of the hospitals in Australia. And uh, thank you for the videos and other things that you helped me out with, which was great. Um, I was <laughs> really chuffed. So I said, thank you. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. Um, and then, uh, Path was um, gracious enough to also offer to do an interview and hopefully in this interview we can give some tips and tricks for other international doctors about navigating what is quite a difficult process to becoming a doctor in Australia. So welcome Path. Thank you for inviting me. Um, so Path, we might just start by asking you to tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Uh, can you give us a bit of background please? Yep. Um... I'm Dr. Path Patel and I'm a medical graduate from India. I passed out in 2014 and I moved to Australia in 2015, lived there for three years, uh, prepared for the exams, passed the exams, and then uh, I was in a difficult spot after passing the clinical. I wasn't getting the job, so many doctors say that you had to get the recency of practice. We had a gap of about more than two years. So I came back to India since six months and yeah, so I got a job recently, oh, a job offer. So, yeah, this is the situation. I'm right. really excited about it. Yep. Fantastic. And it's in emergency medicine, I understand? Yeah. Yep. Uh, and so you're just, I mean, so Path literally been given the job offer. He now has to go through the kind of what's the final step in the process, which is which does take a little bit of time, which is the registration yeah. process. But I know it's at a hospital that does employ international doctors and they know how to look after them, so I'm pretty sure that's going to go well. When we put this video out, it'll be uh, because Paths actually started working. We might do another check-in with him to see how he's going. So you mentioned that uh, all the time it took you to get to the point of getting your AMC certificate meant mm -hmm. that by the time you'd done that, you, it was more than two years since you did clinical practice and you hit what's called the recency of practice, practice um Yep. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, exactly. Um, I think it was bad part from myself that I, I didn't know in the beginning, like there was a huge issue. I moved to Australia on a student visa 
and i would recommend anyone to come to australia on a student visa out advise them to prepare for an exam um right in their country keep practicing and prepare the exam give them and before going on a part to i would advise them to come to australia for 2 3 months learn more bit more about the country the people how the system works and everything so yeah but it's all now i mean it's good for me now that i have a recency now and i can move forward from here yeah yeah so what pass suggesting there is that uh it is possible to do the first part of the amc exam within your own country it has exactly. to come out here and meet some people maybe do a course though there are plenty of online courses now for amc part 1 and part 2 um some are very good and some you just need to be wary about by the way because there's a lot out there uh but you can actually sit the amc part 1 exam you don't even have to come to australia because there's international centers where you can go to be invigilated and so that might be a little bit smarter because it means you can keep working for a bit longer doesn't it yep exactly but i think at a certain point you do need to come to australia and as you said understand what the country is a bit about because particularly when you're going for job interviews uh it's going to be really hard if you haven't got that context um, orientation yeah. exactly yeah like many of the doctors i when i met uh through the clinical i mean i passed in the first time there was uh fortunate <laughs> uh with god bless but yeah they they had many communication issues like they were facing with the examiners and they were just blank uh they had the knowledge but uh the english communication part was really weak for them so they might have to reattempt the exams second and third time it's very daunting task to pass that yeah and yeah, i mean i know english is well spoken in india but it's not the same english that we speak and talk here in australia yeah it's this yeah i had difficulty there. learning uh yeah exactly i had difficulty understanding when i came to australia for about uh two three weeks initially because mm-hmm. of the uh like uh dialects different dialects and um some of the idioms i didn't understand so i would just ask them what do you mean by that and everything so it went smooth by that yeah and that's actually a very good tactic uh yeah. Australians are pretty open if you don't understand if you ask someone what they mean yeah. but they're going to tell you up but if you don't ask you won't find out and you could make a whole lot exactly of and that's one of the things we're actually looking for in the employment interview that you've got that common sense that you can rise above the communication challenges we're not not expecting uh, international doctors to speak perfect slang which is what they call it here yep. um mm-hmm. but to be be aware of it and be able to deal with that challenge yeah so you've been searching for a while had you been applying before you got your part 2s or did you sort of start applying after the the clinical I it was I was really surprised why I didn't apply for the job after passing part 1 like my wife was keep telling me that you should go do something about it the job and I was like you know focus on the one task before doing that like I was focused on clinical mm-hmm. and I heard the horrible stories of people who had to go through clinical 3 5 or 4 5 times and i was like oh i'm on a difficult spot here so i prepared for the clinicals and then i started applying for the job and then i realized that yeah i should have done it long before i got into clinical preparation you know yeah but you but, had a plan so it's it's also important yeah. to stick to the plan isn't it so yeah yeah i did <laughs> so like one thing at a time like part 1 then part 2 english and then the job so i have all the documents ready before i go to the interview you know Yeah, yeah. And so, do you remember how many jobs you applied for after that? Oh, um many, I would say hundreds. Uh and have so many unsuccessful emails <laughs> like if I search in my Gmail unsuccessful <laughs> there'll be many of them. And even after like uh, I applied I was applying for the jobs everywhere. Uh yeah. after I I've got I got the interview and I had the job offer, I got three or four unsuccessful uh, from Sydney and other states and everything. Mm. So yeah. yeah i applied in campaigns individual job openings and everywhere yeah. even in private hospitals but they have general they would require general registration but i still did yeah. it anyway yeah so. sometimes you find jobs in all funny places i was actually in a very rural town the other day and at their private hospital they had an international doctor going through provisional registration as part of the standard pathway uh, process which mm-hmm. was Yeah, it was uh, quite surprising so um, sometimes yeah. th- there are opportunities in the private sector but most of them are in the in the public hospitals and yeah. general practice a little bit as well so yeah, yeah. no it's really nice of you to post the videos about the job openings like 
Yeah. Like you, you have posted three or four videos about the 10 or 11 jobs in each video, so it's really good. Yeah. Thank you very much. So was it one of yeah. those? I don't think I posted one for the one you got, but uh, hopefully... No, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't there. Yeah, hopefully it helped. And so one of the things that you can do a lot of is waste your time applying for jobs that you're not eligible for. Uh, and so the, the trick, as I've explained in a previous video, is to sort of skim through most of the junk and get to the bottom of the selection criteria and see whether they will accept you without registration, yeah. basically. So if you do that, you can probably cut out 95% of the jobs that are there. Um, exactly. Yeah, like uh, Queensland is all right, but for New South Wales, you had to apply for individual job uh, hospitals. Mm. So I made priorities like who accepts international medical graduates, apply them in the first place and then move on to the other, other stage. Because mm -hmm. I had like, we had one month, uh, yeah, one month duration for the whole campaign. Yeah. And there are many, many selection criteria, which I'm not aware of. Like there was one of detect course to manage patients with deteriorating condition. Yeah. Never heard of it. Searched on Google, didn't find anything, but I just, you know, mm -hmm. wrote something down about my experience in a ICU. And yeah. 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 So that's a mandatory course in New South Wales health that you only really do if you're a medical student or Okay. Part of New South Wales Health. So it's yeah. kind of one of those things you can't get done unless you're in New South Wales Health in the first place. So it's a catch. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So they can be fairly surprising ones that might need a bit of sorting out. And I've noticed lately sometimes you get the eligible for registration, but then they want, uh, I saw one the other day, they wanted, six, a, yeah, at least six months in the last two years. Six months in, yeah. Sometimes you think 12 months, uh, or yeah, yep. 12 months in the Australian healthcare system, or a like country when they put UK, US, etc. So it can be difficult. Yeah, um, yeah, it's very, it's very difficult for, uh, especially not a uh, competent authority pathway candidates. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So um, the job that you got was this your first interview, or did you have other interviews before that? No, this was my first one. Oh, great, great. Uh, and so the challenge is actually getting through to the interview. <laughs> if you can get through. I was really nervous. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so you go. Yeah, I was really nervous for two days. Like I got a call on Monday mm -hmm. uh, in the morning uh, and I thought, oh, it's, it's unusual to get an Australian. Because I'm in India right now, I don't get many calls from Australia. So I thought it's a, it's a scam call or something because I get so many calls in Australia. Mm -hmm. So uh, I got an interview and they, uh, sorry, they arranged an interview two days later. And I was like, I haven't prepared for an interview before. Uh, so many questions they asked. So I, I prepared some answers. Like I went to your website as well. And they have wonderful, wonderful questions for RMO. Like I think there are around 50 or 60 of them. Mm -hmm. And they're really wonderful. I, I searched for them and prepared for them. And uh, on the day of interview, it went really well. Yep. Because of the preparation. I've, I've seen your videos about uh, interview tips as well. So... Altogether, it was really helpful from your part, and I'm really, really appreciative of that. Oh, thank you, Path. Um, yes, yeah, so I will. Path mentioned a few things on the website, the Advanced Med website. There's a yep. question bank which you can search for on Google. I'll put a link in the description below to some of the uh, key pages. There's um, uh, there's some obviously some videos in the channel. There's a post I've just refreshed recently about how to write your medical CV that. Um, you should also check out that would be useful to people. But yeah, go check out the question bank because it's. Uh, I just uh, there's, I've even got more questions to put on the question bank, but there's four over 400 questions there now that you can use for a range of jobs to help you help you practice yep. for the interviews, which is useful. Uh, and so, did you go in person or did you phone in or how did you do the interview? Yeah, I had a phone interview. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Because I, I was all the way in India at the moment. Yeah. So. so we wouldn't generally recommend that if you can go in person that's great if they sometimes they'll offer you a um a video option if you can like this uh yep take that as well that's kind of a, a good uh good intermediary but um yeah look if you can get through then you there's, then that's basically your chance to convince them that you understand the australian context that you're going to be a safe team worker and usually getting through to the interview is the main challenge for most people I yeah yeah. And I think it's easier of like face to face. You can understand the expressions and everything. What are they trying to say? It's in the phone. They were like, they, they put me on speaker. Mm. Uh, there was director and other consultant. So, and there was like background noise of the ED. <laughs> but I, <laughs> fortunately enough for me, I, I could understand everything. So, 
That's good. Just a little little tip. If you do ever do a phone interview, one thing they recommend you do is actually, if you can walk around with the phone on speakerphone or something like that, that actually helps. Walking gets your frontal lobes working and you kind of get a bit more creative. Oh. Yeah, so okay. it's actually, yeah, if you, <laughs> you can just sort of pace around the speakerphone. Um, yeah. Helps a little bit. Okay, so, and do you remember any of the questions that they did ask you at the interview? What, what sort of questions did they ask? Yeah, first was uh, introductory. Tell me about yourself and why would you like to work in the hospital? Mm-hmm. So I searched, I searched about the hospital before uh, yeah. because I was, I was expecting that, uh, the question. Yeah. And then second was an ethical question that I had to manage a patient with difficult behavior or, or an angry relative which wasn't uh, attended by a doctor because of some other reasons. How did you manage that? And third one was um, there's a patient with decreasing consciousness came to an ED and how did you, how do you manage? So it's like a survey, primary, secondary survey. And mm-hmm. yeah, so I explained yeah. that. And then at the end of interview, there were visa questions, uh, English requirements and how, how will you do it? How will you manage to come to? And so these are all pretty typical questions. Uh, mm-hmm. Often someone's read your CV, but the other people interviewing you haven't. So that's why they usually ask them, yep. tell us about yourself question. Does, to yep. me, it seems a bit lazy, but as I've, I will post in it, I've got a video to come out in the next month or so. Yep. That's an opportunity for you to tell them how you're a good fit for them. So they, Exactly. Um, yep. So you can kind of spin that one around. Uh, and it's yep. always important to do a bit of research, know a little bit about the place. If you're not yep. from somewhere and you know something about it, that's really impressive. And particularly if you're up against people that are like, already there interviewing for the job. They're expected to know lots. If you know a bit, then that will yep. uh, And then communication challenge and a clinical challenge is fairly common at this level. So you can kind of predict the sort of questions they might ask. And were you able to use any examples to answer those questions or did you just sort of answer them the way they asked them? No, uh, no I had an example in mind like for uh, everything, like for... Uh, tell me about yourself. I, I told them I have lived in Australia for some time and I understand it's a multicultural country. I understand the patient's decision based on their religion and stuff like that. And uh, I told them it's a hospital about like this hospital is very uh, nice and it's oldest hospital and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. For the second question, I had like I had the same incident happen to me about three, four days ago. So I told that that there was a patient with this condition and was stable vitally stable and everything was all right, but I had to manage other emergencies. So be in a quiet environment, explain the situation and then attend to the staff. I asked the nurse to take care of the patient and everything just like that. Yeah. And third one was pretty, pretty straightforward. Like, yeah. So what you're trying to do there is actually not just show, you know, how to answer the questions by theory, but you've done it before when it's, uh, when you're under pressure. And if they would have heard that from Partha would have said, actually this, which is something like, actually, this actually happened to me the other day. Let me tell you what happened. Mm-hmm. And then take them through the story. And you're getting them yep. to imagine that, that you're, you know, they're watching you there and they're starting to think about you working with them or them working with you. And if you can get them future-oriented, mm-hmm. thinking, okay, I can see how I could work with this person. This person is on my yep. link. You, you're going to be on a winning streak. So that's that's good. Yeah, exactly. I, I use a star. Re- Sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go for it. Yep. The star response I used to do in selection criteria statement, like situation, task, uh, action, and results. So it was, yeah, yep. it was all right. Yeah. Star works quite well in these scenarios. And as, as we say, sometimes yeah. you'll be asked for an example, but even mm-hmm. if you're not, there's often an example you can bring up and it's just your chance to show them that you can do it, not that you just yep. know you can do it. And that, that'll give them confidence. And exactly. you want to get them imagined. Yeah, there was a... Yeah, in the question, it was uh, mentioned that if you hadn't come across this like like this scenario, you can imagine that this is a situation. How would you manage that in the future? Mm-hmm. So it was both options for for everything. Yeah. Great, great. So you must be pretty excited to be starting. Yep, I am. I am really. That I'm. I waited long enough now <laughs> to work in Australia as a doctor. Yeah. So. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Do you, do you have any advice for people now looking back through the process? Let's uh, let's look at initially, you know, the AMC part of the process. What would be your advice for people who are, who are doing that part? I would advise them to have, like, there are lots of help available online. Like on Facebook, there are many groups who post recalls regularly. And so they can study them in their own country. You don't have to, you know, come to Australia for that. 
and they can make a group uh, like three or four doctors together. Like I studied alone for AMC and clinicals. We had two friends, but then one of them moved away. So uh, it works if you don't have a group, that's fine. You can, you know, Skype, in, uh, Skype video call them or anything like that. But I would advise them not to have any gaps. And it's really essential that you don't have a mm-hmm. gap in your practice because it, it's like you can really be affected by that. And you have to w- wait for one, two years to go back to your country, have the gap, uh, you know, fulfilled and then uh, get the job. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so keep working, prepare for part one and then keep applying for the jobs with English in your hand and prepare for clinicals. And I would advise to go through John Muta because it's a wonderful book. Even you can, uh, I used it in part one as well. So you have a, a background of uh, clinical while preparing for part one. Right? Yeah, so John Mota has like the, um, the first professor of general practice here in Australia and they recommend yep. Yep. his book for the uh, both parts of the AMC. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description below to, to that. But what Pat's saying is there's plenty of free help that you can yep. get. Uh, so start with the free help uh, and then ask around and find out from people who have done some of these paid courses, find out what's legit and not because, yeah, there are lots of groups on Facebook. I've, I'm in a few of them. I see people popping in and, you know, I know yeah. some of them are good, uh, but you, you, know, you can spend a lot of money unnecessarily. Exactly. Uh, and then so how did you find out about the Career Doctor channel? How did you discover us? I was going through the, like the campaign was on around June, July last year. And I was searching for the selection criteria because there are many statements I had to uh, write in. So I was searching YouTube and then I found about, about the video you posted. Um, oh. It was about, yeah. About so I found out, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I was really surprised because there is not any video of any YouTube, like except for individual YouTubers, they, like individual doctors who post their own YouTube videos, yeah. not any by any experienced doctor who has gone through the system, who knows system in and out. So I was really, I mean, happy to find a video about how Australian healthcare system. And then you went on posting other videos every week or in fortnight in a month. And then I found out about the advanced med, uh, med website. Mm-hmm. And you also did my free CV review. It was really helpful. So thank you for that as well. So, so that's why I thank one then for commenting on one of my videos, by the yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. So don't yeah. everyone ask me for a free CV review. Yeah. Um, no, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, really, uh, yeah. I'll um, find out. Yeah. So, so that was the video I did about selection criteria. So again, some of this stuff from my perspective seems a little bit obvious, but it's actually quite difficult to understand. So there, uh, when you look at some of the jobs mm. in Australia, there are multiple selection criteria and sometimes there are what's called essential and desirable, yep, desirable. essentially you have yep. to have and the desirable are nice to have but some and i discovered one the other day on the south australian website had like 20 and i just think yep uh That's someone needs really to sort that out because it's impossible to meet all those criteria and it's actually impossible yep. to select against them at least in new south wales they have a maximum of eight okay is, That's yeah, good. yeah. Good. <laughs> although sometimes people stick them together to make a you know to try and be clever but yeah, yeah. okay so that's good so yeah i'm glad you found it helpful and as I said it's great to hear success stories from community members from the the channel what do do you think what's the one thing that you've found most helpful about either the website or the the channel what what have you found most useful other than that that like you post individual posts and you always help in the Facebook group that's really helpful because very approachable um, in the Facebook group uh, for the international doctors and yeah, so you can pop any question and you answer them. I'm, I'm sure about that. And many other doctors are really helpful about that as well. Yeah. So got, since, have any questions. Yeah, yeah. So that group's gone over to 500 now and yep. we're starting to get other doctors join the group and start to enter the discussion. So some, but you know, if you've been through this process and you'd like to help your colleagues out, feel free to join that group. We're looking for people who might want to give some tips and advice. You know, I'm happy to answer questions, but it actually helps me if other people can answer them as well. So, uh, Especially there are not negative comments like I see in the other, other groups, like some of them have had bad experience with AMC or the registration process. They just post this their rant and negative comments and they just need to demotivate people. I, I don't like it. So yeah. it's just filtered in your group. So that's really helpful. Yeah, we try and keep it non-spammy. I do yep. tell people about stuff that I do, but we try and keep our people sort of, advertising things or posting uh there was someone the other day who posted a fairly 
unrelated YouTube video. So we, we start trying to keep yep. that sort of stuff out of it and just make it focused on answering questions and, and yep. helping people out. Great. Okay. Well, look, thank you again for doing the interview uh, today. Thank you. And I look forward to hearing about you starting in the future and uh, hope to I'm, be connecting with you. Yeah, I might contact you while working as well if I have any question in mind and I'm sure you'll help me and other doctors. Yeah, We're, we're definitely here to help. There's yeah. the, the group, there's the website, there's the videos, yep. there's the free stuff. If you do want some of my one-on-one help, there are options for that as well. I'm open yep. for coaching and all sure. that stuff for people. So uh, yep. there are a range of ways of getting in contact with me. And thanks again and good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Anthony. All right. Cheers, See you. Bye-bye. So I recorded that interview with Path about three months ago now. We deliberately waited until all the ARPRO requirements have, for registration had been sorted out and until he'd actually physically commenced in the role and been onboarded and got on his feet uh, into it. I did so as there have been a few cases of IMG doctors being offered jobs, even being given a contract, uh, and then that suddenly disappearing uh, for a bunch of reasons, usually again around registration hurdles or just employers sometimes changing their minds, unfortunately. I can tell you that Path has now indeed commenced in his role uh, working as an emergency resident medical officer and he's thoroughly enjoying it and loving it and getting a lot of support from his seniors and supervisors and the rest of his team. I hope to record another video in a couple of months' time so he can give you a few tips and tricks and advice about you know, when you start your job and things to look out for and, and how to make that a more of a smooth process for you. Now, if you would like some help in securing a job just like Path, I've left a link in the description below to some key videos and other resources and blog posts that might very well help you uh, in your challenges. If you would like some assistance with things like your CV or cover letters or interview preparation and coaching, then I'll also link to the services that I provide down below. Now, I'm sure some of you have a question for either me or Path about this process. If so, leave a comment below. And if you've made it all the way through the video to this point, you must have liked the video, so leave me a like and make sure you're subscribed and turned on notifications. Ring that bell and I will see you in the next video.